What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show how you can use Photoshop generative fill in addition to camera projection inside of Blender in order to create a matte painting with 3D parallax and composite it on top of your footage. This is the third part of our generative fill for visual effects series. In the first part, we shared how you can use generative fill inside of Photoshop to create a simple matte painting and then inside of After Effects, we showed you how to add that matte painting to a static, locked off live action piece of footage. In the second part of the series, we showed how you could use that same effect, but then applied it to a simple tripod track inside of After Effects. And then finally, in this third part, we're going to be going that step further to show how we can actually project the matte painting that Generative Fill can create for us onto 3D geometry that you create so that when you have shots with more complex camera moves, you can actually add more realistic matte paintings that have that parallax built in for a more realistic composite. So in this video, I'm going to show how we can add a crater to this live action shot. So I've just had this piece of drone footage here and you can see if we just play through our scene, this is the shot we're going to be adding our 3D crater to. And I'm just going to be, you know, adding a fairly large, you know, hole in the ground here. We're going to 3D track our camera inside of Blender, generate that crater inside of Photoshop on a very specific frame, and then project that image from Photoshop onto the crater geometry that we have inside of Blender. And then finally, we're going to export the composite for a final result. So anyways, guys, let's get started. I do recommend creating a sequence for your video file instead of using the video file itself. So I've gone ahead and exported a sequence containing the PNG files for all the frames of our video footage. So we're going to be importing this inside of Blender. So I'll go ahead and go to applications and open up Blender. And now I'll just delete everything except for our camera here. And now I'll go to the plus tab here. We'll add a new visual effects motion tracking tab. And now I will open up that PNG sequence of our footage. So I have the desert sequence for crater and I'll just select the first frame of our sequence and then click on open clip and it should automatically import the entire sequence for you. And now I'll click on set scene frames so that our Blender project has the same frames included as our movie clip. And then finally, I'll also click on prefetch. So Blender isn't always looking for those frames and it's a little bit quicker in our playback. So now that we've done this, let's go ahead and 3D track the shot. I do have a more advanced 3D tracking tutorial on the channel. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. But for a simple track, we should be able to get a pretty clean result here. So I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do a quick track on this shot as well. So I'll go to frame one. I like to change our tracking settings to blur footage just so our pattern size and search size are a little bit higher and I'll also click on normalize just so we don't get as many errors in our individual tracking points and I'll just do a fairly automated track for the shot again if you have a more complex shot and you want a more specific tutorial I'll put a link to that in the description below but we should be able to just go detect features and it will add a variety of different points here for us if you need more points you can bring down the threshold here but we should be able to do this and then we'll just click on track forward now Blender's going to track all those markers for you. And then we'll once again, click on detect features while our cursor is at the end of our timeline. And Blender will add some more points. We'll track these guys backwards. So we're giving Blender a lot of data to work with to reconstruct this camera move. Then I'll just go to the middle of our timeline as well. Click on detect features again. We'll track these points backward. And then we'll also go and track them forward to the end of our clip as well. And now before we click on solve track, we'll just select all of our tracking points here and just kind of scroll through our timeline to see if we have any noticeable slipping on any of our tracks. It's looking pretty good here, I'm not seeing any slipping. So I think we're gonna get a pretty clean looking track. So this is looking pretty good. Now we'll go to our solve tab here. I will refine our focal length. You can also refine optical center and radial distortion if you like as well. If you want a little bit more accurate result for your camera, but found that focal length will work pretty well. And we want to select our keyframe A and keyframe B at different parts of our timeline where there's the most camera movement. So I'm thinking maybe from frame 30 to maybe uh, 80, we can make this. And we just wanna choose some frames there where the camera moves a fair bit. For this specific shot, the camera moves quite a bit throughout the entire thing. So shouldn't be too much of an issue with these frames. You can also select the keyframe option and then Blender will automatically choose those frames for you if you want a more automated process. So this should be pretty good. Now we'll click on solve camera motion and let's see what kind of track Blender gives us. All right, so we have a solve error of 0.7 pixels, which is fairly accurate. Now let's reconstruct our scene so that we can add our crater to it. You wanna make sure you have a camera in your scene here, which should be there by default. And we'll actually set our footage as the background of our scene. So you can see it pops up here. And then I'll also just go ahead and click on set up tracking scene. And right off the bat, you'll have something like this. And that shows your various tracking markers in your 3D viewport. However, we do need to set up the orientation and scale a bit here before we continue. So I'll just select two points here to set the scale of our scene. And we're just going to tell Blender about how far these points are from each other in the real world. 
Uh, it's a little bit hard to tell the scale here, but I'm gonna say it's about five meters. So I'll change this distance to five and then we'll click on set scale and then Blender will apply that scale to our track up here. And then we also want to set the floor of our scene. So I'll select three different points here that represent the floor of our geometry of the live action shot. And then I'll click on floor. And now we've told Blender where our ground of the scene is. So now that we've done that, we can go to layout mode and we'll go to view, viewpoint, camera, and you can see our 3D camera track here. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now, I might want to set the center of our scene a bit differently because our geometry here that Blender has automatically created for us kind of goes by our camera and we just kind of lose it. So I'll go back to our motion tracking tab and for the center of our scene, I'm going to choose the moment where we have our crater. So maybe around frame 246. We'll go ahead and select this point right here and we'll make this the origin point. And now you can see here, if we go into layout mode, can see we have our 3d cube over here and it's tracked into our geometry and we have a pretty clean looking camera track for our scene all right so now that we have a basic camera track let's choose a frame where we would see most of the crater so the thing with camera projection is you want to actually make sure that you have all the data in your map painting that you want to work with before projecting that onto the geometry so since our shot moves up and over our crater or our hypothetical crater right now we want to actually make sure that we add our map painting at the end of our shot because that's when we're going to see most of the interior part of the crater so this will all be a little bit more obvious at the end of our video but you just want to choose the frame where your map painting will be seen the most so so in this specific case, we'll do frame 298, our last frame of the sequence. I'll open up Photoshop beta here. We'll find this frame and I'll drag this into Photoshop to open it up. And now we have this frame inside of a Photoshop file and we can add our crater to it. So this little tab right here is how we're going to add our crater. So the first thing we're going to do is use our lasso tool to select where we want to add our crater to. So I'm just going to select a very large portion of our image something like this and I'll click on generative fill and we just want to type in what would we like to generate so I'm gonna say add huge crater and I'll click on generate and give it a second and let's see what it creates for us and right off the bat you can see it has some various options for us to add craters to our shot I actually skipped forward a bit I generated some more results with one more prompt one of the things with generative fill is that it doesn't know what you're thinking so you just have to prompt it in a way that you think you're gonna get the best result from that input so we have a variety of different options here for us I'm just gonna choose the best one uh, this one's kind of interesting this one's a little bit more like I was imagining but the black levels are a little bit uh, low but you can see it's done a pretty good job matching the lighting of our live action shot, which is quite nice. I'm gonna go with this one right here. This is just the most interesting for me. So now we'll go ahead and export this image. So I'll go to file, save a copy, and we'll have a new folder for it here. Call it creator for projection. Just so we know the frame, we'll leave the 298 there. We'll save it as a PNG, so we'll say creator projection. Okay, save it as a PNG here. And now let's go ahead and get back into Blender and project this image onto some 3D geometry that we create. All right, so we're back inside of Blender. Now we'll select our 3D camera here. I wanna to go to frame 298 and we want to actually see our crater projection as the background for our camera here. So to do that, I'll select our object data properties tab while our camera is selected. Then under background images, we'll add our crater image that we have just created inside of Photoshop. And we actually have our movie clip here in the background at first. So I'll deselect this for now and then we'll open up our crater image right here. In this second option, we'll find our crater for projection find that PNG file, open this up, and now you can see we can use this to line up the 3D geometry that we add to our scene. So I'll go ahead and delete our cube here. Now what we want to do is just create some rough geometry for our crater. So I think for this, I'll just press Shift A, We'll add a basic cylinder to our scene, we'll scale this up a bit. And now I do want to see our motion tracking data so we can line up our geometry to our 3D camera move. So I'll go up here and select the motion tracking option. And now we can see our tracking data. So we wanna actually line up our geometry of the ground plane here as well. So I'll go ahead and just scale our ground plane up really quick just so we have a good reference of where this crater is going to be. I'm just gonna scale this up. And I also want to increase the clipping end so we can see all the way to the back here. So I'll just make this maybe 1000. Now we can see our ground plane a bit better. Okay, so we'll scale this way up and make sure it's aligned with our ground here, like so. You can see our tracking markers are on the ground, so we wanna put this guy right aligned with those. And that's looking pretty good, okay. So we'll line up our ground plane to our live action shot now. 
and I'll just make, I'll just enable all of our restriction toggles here. And you'll see that the reason we need this ground plane here is so we can actually use it as a holdout for our creator geometry as well. So we'll get to that in a second, but we've lined up our ground geometry to our motion tracking points now. I'll reselect our cylinder here and we will go to wireframe mode and we'll just add our cylinder where this crater is going to be before roughly creating the shape of it here. So we'll scale it up a bit. We'll start with aligning the top of the crater, I think. Go into edit mode here, select these, this bottom portion, scale it out a bit, bring this guy up. We just wanna line up the cylinder as best we can to our crater here. And we're gonna go into proportional editing mode here in a second to line it up even better, but this is looking pretty good. And we wanna make sure that we get enough of the area around the crater as well, because our projection actually includes some of this area around the crater. So let's line this up as best we can here. I'll go into edit mode here, kind of extend this down. And now this is sort of an interesting model because we want the inside to go concave, but then the outside goes down like this. So actually I'll just grab the bottom vertices of our crater and scale this up a bit, maybe even extrude it, scale it up. So we have a decent projection there. And now I'll take these top vertices here and I'll actually extrude these guys downward to create that inner portion of the crater, like so. I'll go ahead and turn off our ground here for a second so we can see our what we're working with a bit better. All right, so we have a rough model of our crater here. It's not perfect, but what we can do now is actually subdivide our crater. So I'll select all of our vertices, go to edge, subdivide, and we'll subdivide it a few times. And this is important so we can go into proportional editing mode and line up our geometry to our projection a bit better. And then also so that we can actually project our image onto this geometry without any errors in the actual UVs. So I recommend increasing the number of cuts here. And now we can actually go to solid mode and then we can zoom in here and I'll actually enable proportional editing so we can actually grab certain points here and then we can scroll up and down. You can see what that's doing here and we can just align up our geometry to the map painting of it better. So this is looking good. Go into wireframe mode. Now I'm just gonna fast forward through this part, but the whole point is that you want to line up your CG geometry to our map painting. All right, so now we have the geometry of our crater here. Now let's go ahead and create a new material for this crater geometry and project the crater onto it. So I'll go to our material properties tab, add a new material. I do want to switch our render engine to cycles for a more realistic render, but we'll go here, we'll change our, our material type to an emission material since we've just baked the lighting onto this map painting and we'll change the color to an image texture and we'll click on open and find our map painting. So crater for projection and our PNG file that we have created for our map painting, open this up. And now what we want to do is change our vector to UV and nothing will happen yet because we haven't actually created a UV map that's projected from our camera on this geometry. But all we have to do to do that is go to edit mode, make sure you're in our camera view on the frame that we have created this map painting for, so frame 298. Then we'll select all of our vertices here and I'll press U and we'll select the project from view option. So now we'll go back into object mode and if we've done it right and we go to rendered view, we should have a camera projection of our crater on this 3D geometry. And you can see that's exactly what we have. Now, you can see that the downside of camera projection is that it only works from the main angle that your camera is moving on, but that shouldn't be a problem for this shot. As you saw from the demo, this should look pretty good. Now we'll select our camera again, and I want to show our clip once again in the background here, since right now we're just seeing our camera projection. So if we go to the beginning, it's still the same shot. So I want to go to our background images and I'll turn on our desert for crater clip, and then I'll turn off our crater projection. And now you can see what we have here is our crater tracked onto our shot. And we can turn on our ground here and it will actually line up a little bit better. Now one thing we're going to have an issue with right now is our background. Well for one actually we need to make our background transparent so we can render this out better. So I'll select our camera and under film we'll make this transparent. And now you can see our background is acting as a holdout on the ground which is going to help us composite that much better into our scene. I want to uh, go to our object data properties tab with our background images and I'll bring up the opacity here all the way. And one thing that I don't like about this right now is our background projection is actually cutting off this bottom portion of our crater. So you can see this is our background. We actually wanna see the interior of the crater. So what I want to do is I just wanna cut out this portion of our uh, ground plane here. So I'll just add a very basic cylinder here to our scene. 
and I'll kind of line this up to where that part of the ground plane is. But the whole point here is that we want to select our ground plane here, add a Boolean modifier to it, then we'll select this new cylinder. You could use fast or exact, but the whole point is this cylinder that we've added is going to cut out that portion of the ground plane so that that ground plane doesn't occlude the interior of our crater. So now that we've done this, we can go ahead and apply the Boolean modifier, select our cylinder here that we've added temporarily, close that. And now you can see here, if we move our crater, we actually have a hole where that ground plane is. So that ground plane, once we go into render view, won't actually occlude the bottom of our crater. All right, so this is looking pretty good, guys. Go ahead and go into EV really quick, just so we can see what it looks like in real time. And here we have it. This is how you can use camera projection to add a crater map painting to your shot. Now there are a few different things we could do to make this a bit better, but our scenes are looking pretty good here, guys. If the camera move was a lot more prevalent, then sometimes you get issues with camera projection. But for this specific shot, it should look pretty good. One thing I did for the visual effects breakdown of the original crater video that we created on this channel is I just added some 2D elements of atmospheres inside of our crater and composited those into our shot. So, you know, mixing in some live action dust to kind of blend in where the CG meets the live action could help a lot. But this is the general concept here, guys, on how you can use generative fill in Photoshop as your matte painting helper, and then use that matte painting, project it onto CG geometry inside a blender, and with a little bit of work, get a fairly convincing result. So anyways, guys, that is it for this video. Hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel, and I'll see you next time.